So if I just for a second bring back our our graph from previously, the next slide shows the so-called Hill equation, which uh, is actually uh, derived a little bit earlier than the michaelis menten function, but turns out that the, the Hill uh, equation or that this equation is a little bit more general than the michaelis menten And it's more general in the sense that it contains the michaelis menten rate law as a special case. So let's look at this uh, equation highlighted in yellow. It's very similar to what we've seen before, uh, but the rate now is defined as a product of Vmax times S substrate concentration to the power of N divided by, in brackets, K to the power of N plus S to the power of N. So whatever we had before in S and K, Km, is now taken to a power of N, and N is the so-called Hill exponent or the Hill coefficient. You also see a picture of A.V. Hill um, here on the on the right side, who actually for the larger part of his academic career taught and researched and did research at the University College here in London. And if you're ever here, you can go and visit the A.V. Hill lecture theatre, which is just around the corner. And we have a couple of um, nice memories of him here. And even some of the old labs are actually still working in the old buildings from that time when he worked here. So let's remember this. Uh, now we have the substrate concentration to the power of n and uh, the Km, now called only k, the Hill constant, also taken to the power of m, is a version of the enzyme kinetics as it was derived for polymeric enzymes. So if enzymes often are found in dimeric, tetrameric, uh, or even octameric form, and he thought that this should be taken into account because their enzyme kinetics was found to significantly differ from ordinary michaelis menten enzymes. So let's go back to our MATLAB and let's try to implement this more generalized function and then have a look at its properties. So I'm going to just save this, save this file uh, and open a new one that we've um, had. I'm going to do exactly the same thing, but let's, let's start again anyway. Um, so we need a new, a new anonymous function, this time here. Uh, again, at symbol, we need our variables inside, so the substrate, the Vmax, uh, a k from here, which was km before. It tends to be km in the michaelis menten equation, tends to be k in the hill, and we'll come back to uh, discuss that again in a minute. Uh, and now this n, this hill coefficient. Yeah, we have to add this new argument here because now we are having four things to consider from the general form of this equation. So s is now s to the n. Let's divide by k to now to the n, and s again to the n. Okay. I don't think I've made any, made any typos there. Well, we'll see by what MATLAB tells, uh, tells us when we uh, transform it. Let's check. Uh, we have now. Yeah, it's very similar to before, right? It's the yeah. same thing as before, except for this n. And so the first thing we can do, of course, a very important feature whenever you make an extension, check that the previous cases is uh, correctly represented. So let's check whether the michaelis menten uh, function can be recovered. So um, that's when n equals 1. So let's make a, another anonymous function, hill 1. Uh, we want to be able to plot this with f plot in a second, so let's just give it s. Uh, let's just have one variable s, and let's give our previous function, well, we want s to stay there. Uh, now we want a, we want the Vmax, let's go for 1 again. Uh, Km, should we go for 0.1 again, just as we had previously? 1. And now n. 
so n we want to be 1 and that would be the same as our original michaelis menten equation so if we have n equal to 1 then we can as well forget it but we specify it because of this hill version and we have chosen the same arbitrary values for v max and k as in the first plot previously uh, and let's just let's plot this first f plot um hill 1 and then give it some limits okay uh, three we had before the plane. Let's look at zero, two, three. Okay. So if we did everything correctly, we should get the previous figure. That looks the same as it did before to me. And we do, that's the same thing. So if we have on the horizontal axis substrate concentration and between zero and three, we find an approach towards the Vmax value of one. And it's the hyperbolic shape that we expected. Okay. I'm going to close this for a second. Yeah. So I what, wonder what happens if we, if we change n. Now we want to see how does n impact on the shape of this function. Um, should we set n to 4? n4 is a classical value to show in textbooks. It's not necessarily uh, derived for tetrameric um, prote uh, proteins, but that was one of the original ideas that we get an exponent that somehow represents. If we give a if we give a relatively extreme value as well, we'll be able to see the difference between the two. Let's just see a value, and for the moment, the important feature, mathematically, the important feature is that this value that we've chosen now is larger than one. Make sure it's got a different color, uh, and also let's let's add the labels in because it does make this clearer. I feel. Uh, the concentration of S uh, and the rate. Okay. So that's something that you don't need to necessarily have, but for clarity, it's good to have some labels. So what we're expecting here now is to first plot the original michaelis menten equation, the hyperbolic equation, and then we plot the Hill function with a value of n that is larger than 1. In this case, we've chosen 4. Okay, let's see what happens. Aha. Uh -huh. It's very different. You have to see large. We can see that the magenta plot is differ is different in a couple of aspects. Should we um, zoom to the right part? Okay. If we use okay. this zoom tool, yes, that you can find uh, and, uh, and the top of this uh, of this uh, plot here, then we can see uh, important features. Okay, so I've zoomed into between north and 0.8. Right, so for small uh, substrate concentrations is where we find the big differences. Uh, what, what features shall we go for? First of all, the shape is different. Right? Yeah. Qualitatively, we no longer have hyperbolic shape. That's very important because it means our kinetic will follow different uh, ways uh, for certain substrate concentrations, and it makes a, lot, a big difference whether we choose one law or whether we choose the other in our model. So in the in the in the case where n equals one, a small change in the substrate um, concentration near zero actually has a big influence on the rate. Whereas when n equals four, a small change in the substrate concentration down near zero doesn't really have an effect at all. Only a, yes, very important feature. So the standard michaelis menten it grows for small substrate concentrations. It grows quickly, and for a hill a cooperative enzyme, as Hill called it already, there is little change for small substrate concentrations. But the interesting thing is then, once it, um, once it gets going, it gets going faster than the case when n equals 1. It then at some point takes over. We can see that incidentally at a, a substrate concentration of 0 0.1, and we remember where that came from, which is concentration, they have the exact same rate. But from that point onwards, the Hill function takes over. So the rate in a Hill enzyme would be faster. The cooperative enzyme would work faster compared to the corresponding michaelis menten enzyme. And also turning to the right side of the equation, uh, rates are typically rather high for not too high substrate concentrations already. So the approach to the Vmax to the final value is much faster and it seems to have reached it actually already at this border here where we have 0 0.8 only. So we don't go very much into its functional use. 
but for those who are interested in these, the, the shape is called sigmoidal. And the interesting feature of these enzymes, of the cooperatively working enzymes or the enzymes with sigmoidal kinetics is that they approach switching properties. That rather than having a continuous increase in rate, they either don't work for very small substrate concentration, near zero rates, or they work at a very high rate. So they switch from low to fast rate at a comparatively narrow range of substrate concentrations. We can show that in the extreme case, if we uh, change our second function to have, say, an n value of, say, 100, obviously this isn't, isn't physiologically likely. Uh, but in that case, we get very, very neat switching where there's no rate when this is very small, but as soon as it gets to this 0.1 value or near the 0.1 value, it turns on. Yeah, so we have sort of made a step function from this continuous, from previous continuous function, and we can see that the sigmoidal enzymes are just an approximation, so they're smooth approximations to a step function. Um, interestingly, of course, we often find sigmoidal behavior when enzymes have to do with information processing as in signaling cascades. So this might not be a coincidence. And just to clarify, this is setting an equals to 100 to get this value. So this is not physiological, but just showing you that this is the extreme form of the Hill function uh, that we get for very large exponents. Um, let's do uh, the, the opposite and take a Hill exponent that is actually smaller than 1. Although this is not really known physiologically, but mathematically it might be interesting. And you can, before we do the graph, you might try to predict what would you expect for an exponent that is smaller than 1. What, should we go for 0 0.1? Is that okay? Uh, take 0 0.5, something 0.5, not okay. too small. So there's a value of n that is smaller than 1 means we are sort of below Michaelis Menden, right? Michaelis Menden was when it's equal to 1. Uh, what would we expect? Now, rather than having this slow start and then it's very fast rate for higher substrate concentration, we might expect something like the opposite happening. Should we have a look? So what would we expect for very, slow, for very low substrate concentrations? That the, yeah, let's take a look. Let me simulate it. And now uh, the magenta is our sub michaelis menten hill function. And you can see that the rate for very small substrate concentration is even faster than the hyperbolic one, but that it preserves the shape. Right? So it still starts steeply and then levels off. And you can check if you, may, if you expand the range to very high substrate concentration, it also approaches the same Vmax. It will end up at the same maximal concentration, but it will only reach it for very high values of s. So this is, of course, mathematically very reasonable, and it doesn't have much of a physiological significance, but it's a way of trying to find out properties. And you can see once you get used to using MATLAB, it's all and uh, within the reach of just a few seconds that you can program this and can have a look at all the features. What if we look at this point where these two curves intersect? Uh, incidentally, of course, it's as before. It's the half maximum rate. If we look at the substrate concentration is 0 0.1. So it's still this k value. Uh, if we can look at this original thing, but you can see that now we have the k value that we added, but in the form that k is actually taken to the power of n as well. So in that case, all these curves, independently of the exact value of n, all these curves uh, will cross at the same point, a feature that you also see in the graph that's shown in the materials. OK, very well. So we have found out a couple of features. And we're going to later on use such things. Um, before, uh, one thing that I wanted to show that, of course, working with Michaelis Menten and Hill equation, as we said, depends on approximations. And uh, we must warn you that, in principle, a rate loss can be much more complicated. 
for example, for those who uh, who know these things, the Hill form is a very simplified, mathematically convenient way of putting it. But uh, Jacques Bonneau and uh, François Jacot later on went on to derive more realistic mechanisms that turned into models of cooperative enzymatic rates that are more complicated and that we go, don't go into here. But once you have grasped this concept of the Hill equation, I think it will be easy to go forward and to also understand the mono women change uh, function. There's also things that can be added to the michaelis menten um, form of the equation, um, quite often uh, products and addition. So there's a way to um, represent that within uh, the equation. Right, and of course, yeah, I even forgot to mention, we have looked only at dependence of substrate. Um, if we have reversible forms, then the rate will also depend on the product present. Often we have a co-substrate, NADH and ATP being notable examples. If they, they are present and if they are needed for the reaction, they will also have to be included. And of course, all the regulatory molecules, if there are uh, any allosteric regulators, competitive regulators, all of these things will have to go in and the formulas can be quite intimidating then. But I think there's nothing to worry about once you know how it's being done. Once you're familiar with this way of setting up an algebraic function, you can do this and look at the function plotted directly. And if you want to integrate explicitly, we have shown in the first exercise how using symbolic function this can also be done.